Hello, hello, everybody. We are back with Changeling for our final ending for Sweet Boy Ewan, and this will definitely be the friendship ending. So we are back in chapter one, and we are going to go through the same dance one last time. So here is the choices in the order that you need to do in order to get the ending you want to get. So there are going to be some new ones that we haven't done yet, which will be fun. And then the ones that are like, you need to do this instead of this, but I haven't seen this yet. Then I'm going to go back, do some time travel stuff. It'll be fun. I don't think we've done this yet. So this is the one I have to do, but we'll do this for right now. Right? Yes. Sounds interesting. Where exactly are we going? Drayson grinned. Somewhere really nice, I promise. Not off school grounds, I hope. I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. Drayson grabbed my hand and dragged me away from the cafeteria, though I hadn't technically agreed to go with him yet. People in the club go there a lot. Don't worry. I always worry when people are unnecessarily cryptic. I'm not an unnecessary cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to be misconstrued, but I'm so glad. Oh, it was great. No, that's not... <sighs> Never mind. I was too unsure if he was teasing or had actually misunderstood to bother explaining what I meant. Anyway, you'll like it. I promise. It's fun and it's a safe place to get away from school for a while. Well, if everyone goes there, I guess it's okay. Okay, are we... not yet. I hoped he wasn't just taking me to the club room. I mean, technically it was a secret, but if that's where we were going, there wasn't much reason to be mysterious about it. He did take me straight up to the club, but he didn't stop once we were inside. He pulled me straight over to the library door and knocked. Not the three straight knocks that led to the library. When he pulled it open, I felt a rush of warm air. What on earth? I stepped through curiously. Okay, so now we're back. And so now we go back in time and do this one. Okay, back on the path. But now we know what that option does. We've done all of these, but we have to ask about Drayson. Okay, we've done all of these, so we can keep going. What am I... Okay, not the correct option. Accepting the ride without hesitation. Telling Allie not to step in. Hiding things from Danny. Somehow this end ends up in a good ending. No kissing. Never ever. Only in the best end you get to smooch the boy. Always let the brownie stay. We know this. Do I get to ask if you slept okay? No, I have to say nothing. Okay. I've never done this one, so we're gonna do this first. Confirm. I chewed my lip, but finally decided to initiate a conversation. Just to sound things out a bit. If he decided to be a jerk, I could just flee. So, did you sleep okay? He glared at me. Never a good sign. Someone was making a lot of noise last night. Or are you just asking so you can find out if you woke me up? Oops. To be fair, that wasn't my fault. Not that I could explain it to him. <sighs> I sighed softly and got my things. I just go out and wait for Allie. Blurg on you. I'm not talking to you. Go away. <laughs> um. Now, what am I doing here? It's one of these I haven't done before, and I can't remember. Yeah, okay. I thought I defended Spencer in the best ending. I bit back the urge to respond. I just wasn't up for fighting with Kara, of all people, first thing in the morning. She wasn't worth it at all in any fashion. Come on, Drayson. Wanna head in with me? Running from a confrontation, just like you always do. I rolled my eyes. Sure, Kara. Look, if you count my family moving away as running away, then you're an idiot. Which, whatever, we knew that already. But my parents chose to move, not me. 
and I'm not afraid to engage with you or eviscerate you with words. It's just that you're too easy a target and I have better things to do. Damn, that was almost Mark level. You haven't changed a bit, have you? Still throwing people away, hurting whoever's around you because you can't be bothered to care about anyone but yourself. Whatever. I pulled Drayson away, determined to not respond to that. I guess I should be glad you didn't hurt me as bad as you hurt your brother. I froze. At least I wasn't blinded. I rounded on her at that, ready to tear into her. She could start rumors, she could be a cow, but that was off limits. Nora, come on. We should go, right? He gently pulled me away, and though that smirk on Kara's face was infuriating, I let him. Drayson led me inside, but I was nearly shaking with anger by the time we got up to the stairs. We were about halfway up the stairs when Ewan joined us. Wasn't sure where he'd gone or where he came from, but none of us spoke as we went up the rest of the way to the fourth floor. Okay, are we back now? Yes. It boggles the mind how she manages to consider herself the victim. People just don't realize how much gossip hurts. Not until they're the victims of it. Yeah. The idea that I was the one that hurt Spencer? I didn't need Kara throwing that in my face. I was already terrified that's what happened somehow, and that all of Spencer's hate and paranoia were completely justified. I sighed again and squeezed the pillow tighter. Man, this sucked. Alright, take me away, boy. Get me out of here. Okay, we're accosting Brenna. Good. And then we are going to look at Brenna. Good. Both good options. Am I snooping? I'm snooping. Ugh. The worst. And yay, we get to invite Shelly. Good. Uh, I'm texting Allie, not confronting Ewan at the moment. Ugh, I gotta do refuse again? I hate doing refuse. Okay, we've never done silently panic, so we'll do that first and then come back to refuse. I think Ewan's trying to escape on his motorcycle. <laughs> Just room, room, room. I stood there, frozen to the spot, and it had nothing to do with the cold. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind you and going inside. At all, really. In fact, if Mom hadn't been home, I may have invited him in on my own. But... Ewan? Meeting my mother. The very thought was terrifying. Not just because if his head did anything unusual, she would freak out. But also because my mom was evil and delighted in embarrassing me. I knew she was going to say something weird and I was going to dissolve into a puddle of humiliation. I had no idea how to make her stop dragging you into the house. You're like a foot taller than her, you, and fight back! Oh, man. Nora, you coming? Do I have a choice? She gave me a frustrated look. Get in this house right this minute! Good grief! Well, this bodes well. I tagged along behind them reluctantly, hoping nothing went terribly wrong. Okay. I'll just see if anything changes with this. No. Okay. So, it goes badly regardless, and Mom faints. Oh no. I can't go back any further. No! <laughs> um, well... Blurg. Okay. More intensive time traveling. I shall return. Alright, I've got the dulcet tones of Ewan's motorcycle in the background to bring you guys all back. Alright, time traveling accomplished. As I was saying, we need to refuse. Okay, from now on, quick save. Not that it's really gonna matter, this is like the last time I'm traveling through time. <laughs> My last ending. For a boy, I guess I should specify. Okay, where was I, Dad? Do I have to go with you? <laughs> do I have to do the whole pudding thing? Okay, so we're gonna do a quick save. And 
Um, I have to do this one, but we've never done this before. I can introduce you to him. I've already met him. And if I recall, he was very polite. And it was after he rescued me from being left at school by my rude brother. Rescue seems like a strong word. I don't know. You seemed pretty worried about my safety. You were riding on that motorcycle! Do you know how dangerous those are? You and drive safely. Yeah, I've heard you've ridden with him several times already. Thanks, Mom. And he hasn't killed me even once. Once is all it takes! Is the motorcycle really the issue here? Or do you just not like that he's, you know, a boy? <laughs> That's definitely part of the problem. You can't trust boys, especially not boys that wear that much leather. What's the acceptable leather threshold, then? None! Oh. Well, I guess I have to stop talking to you. Those leather shoes of yours are a huge problem, then. At least I don't have all those zippers... everywhere. What reasonable person needs that many zippers? See, all Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy characters. <sighs> I just sighed. There really was no reasoning with him. Though he was pretty funny when he was getting hysterical. <laughs> Besides, it was pointless to try to waste time convincing him it was fine. Ewan and I were just friends anyway. Or... We were friends-ish. We weren't more than friends anyway, that I was certain of. Boo. Though I was starting to be less and less sure if I was satisfied with that or not. Ooh. Okay. So. Let's go back. So we're just friends. Okay. And I need to move my feet because I can't feel them. Yeah. There we go. Um, you and you and you and I'm ignoring you <laughs> and your cute apron. And let me guess, yes, meeting you and's mom, talking about you and behind his back again. Somehow this results in friendship. Okay, no hugs outside. At least we can say not all fairies are bad this time. That's nice. Okay, we haven't done this one, and this is the one we actually have to do. So, let's find out. Whoever had grabbed me was tall. Very, very tall. Stupidly tall. But that also meant I was perfectly positioned to attack. I managed to wiggle one arm loose enough from the sudden embrace to elbow him, him firmly in the gut. Oof! The tall man doubled over, loosening his grip on me. This gave me a chance to pull away, scraping the hair out of my eyes again. I staggered back a step or two, trying to put some distance between the two of us. You stay back! Who are you? The stranger wheezed, trying to catch his breath. I was a little proud of myself, honestly. And it wasn't any less than he deserved. You didn't just grab random people in the middle of the night. Have you always been this violent? Only when strangers grab me in the middle of the night. Now that I was getting a look at him, I realized he wasn't much older than me, if at all. And... something about him was familiar. Mm, there we go. Okay, we're back. Grand, always ignore. No tree lady for me, thank you. Um, okay. No offering of help. Okay, Spencer didn't make it into our room, that's a good sign. Ah, we leave the brownie alone. Always glad to see that. And then... Stay in bed. Don't check it out. Do not engage with the brother. Don't worry about the brother either. Okay. Um, we're gonna ask about Drayson. Talk about uh, devotion being terrifying. And then this one... Hey! We haven't done this one yet. Great. I guess you don't have any siblings, right? No, it's just me. Probably a good thing, really. An entire family of bobble-headed fae would probably be a massive headache for the agency. That's a lot of... 
Heads, head puns, bobble-headed and a headache. <laughs> Oof. Bobbleheads? Like those little things you put on your dash? <laughs> I smirk slightly, imagining a little dancing you and bouncing his head on the dash of my car. You and bobblehead merch when? The people want to know. You and bopped me lightly on the top of the head. Ow! Stop imagining weird things. What makes you think I'm imagining anything at all? Give me a break. Your face is an open book when it comes to things like that. Pfft. It's a funny mental image, though. I said stop! You're no fun. Psst, segue. What's Spencer really like? I mean... I've only ever known him as the evil twin. It sounds like you guys were close as kids. Yeah, he used to be really different. Just sort of a clingy crybaby, really. But I guess if he somehow caught Changeling me running around the woods, and if she hurt him, that might explain why he's been so hateful all these years. Maybe when this is all over, you two can work things out. I hope so. When we were little... I don't know. I know people are close to their family, close to their brothers and sisters, but it's so different when you're a twin. You feel like the same person sometimes, I guess. You lose track of where one ends and the other begins. We loved all the same stupid things. Playing pirates, acting out fairy tales. We had our own language, our own code. It sounds nice. It was. And I'm so scared he's been hurt again. Don't be scared. You aren't alone in this. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you safe. Both of you. Aw, thanks Ewan, that was sweet. Also, just realized I never did get a reaction from Ewan about Nora's fey language in the journal. That is too bad. I was excited to see if he was like, yo, you're writing in fairy, girl. And her be like, what? But we didn't get that, alas. Uh, what have I done with the bell this time? It's still in my room. Rude. Carry it with you. Okay, we do actually... I was gonna say give him a hug, but then that smack happened. Again with this, okay. Hold on, quick save. And, um, this was the good ending, this is what we have to do, we've never done this, I don't think. Oh, we, we did. Oh, the middle one was the one from the good end, okay. Derp. I think we should just move on. We can't undo the last five years or even the last two weeks. You know the truth now. And I've told you my secret. That's what's important. All we can do now is just keep moving forward. Maybe... Maybe make up for lost time by not being jerks to each other anymore. Moving forward isn't going to erase everything that happened. There's no way to erase things. You just have to accept them and move on. A lot of what happened was out of our control. And I don't know that either of us could reasonably have been expected to react differently than we did. No reason to keep beating yourself up over it. Any more than I can keep beating myself up over some of the things I did when I was still... attached to that fairy. I've been trying to work out when this really all got started. It probably wasn't the incident five years ago, was it? I mean, that... That wasn't even the first time you vanished. Okay, so we're back. Quick load. Doop. And call it like it is. You're a huge jerk. I am glad he's like, you can't erase the past. This is true. Okay, no running in after Spencer. That's always a bad sign. I think we might be on our own, Allie. I kind of have a feeling we're all alone. Alright, just gotta keep picking the correct answers to these riddles. Okay. And 
And then this one... I have to refuse to answer, which I haven't selected yet, but which is basically what we did in the best ending. Okay, so we used the bell. So what happened? Oh, <laughs> about the kiss. <laughs> oh, good grief. What psycho wouldn't do it? It's just a kiss. There's no meaning behind it if one person is unconscious or if you're saving a life. Uh, who's shouting? Aw. She's like, it, does, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. He's asleep. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm shouting! Okay. So, we're in the epilogue now. And this is when things change. Fortunately, the agency had been able to juggle our absence by fabricating a story about club activities and sleepovers. The story was that the Mysteries Club was having an event due to Halloween. They pulled other club members in to make the story seem more legitimate. I had to admit, I was relieved to not be dealing with another media frenzy. Not to mention the family drama. It seemed like Mom and Dad were none the wiser, which was one last thing to worry about. And the agency had, at the very least, mobilized to check out any remaining fairy activity in the woods. The fairy hill was gone completely. There was a deep scrape of earth where it had been, the remains of mushrooms littering the dirt. Apparently, they burned the last of them and salted the ground, just in case, but they were pretty sure that Iron Bell had forced the fairies to relocate. They never found a new hill in the area, though. They also confirmed the gate under the bridge properly closed at the conclusion of Samhain, so we'd made it out just in time. It wasn't like we'd defeated the big bad fairies. At best, we forced a retreat, and there was no guarantee they wouldn't be back, but we didn't have too much time to worry about that. Mom and Dad had left the day after Samhain because Grandpa fell ill and needed to be hospitalized again. I was a little scared when I first heard it, worried it was some kind of vengeance. Fairies did those kinds of things, after all. But it was just normal illness, and he was doing okay, but was in a hospital far enough away that Mom and Dad decided to stay overnight. It left Spencer and I alone to, uh, shore up the defenses at home, just in case. Okay, so I didn't go to the bridge this time, but went to the club. Spencer was still adjusting, which was... understandable. He broke down that day when he saw the remains of the fairy hill. Really broke down. He blamed himself for starting everything, for being so stupid as to go inside the hill. All I could do was hold him tightly and tell him that I still loved him. Aww. Guilt wasn't something you could work through that easily. And it didn't really matter how many times I told him I didn't blame him. He was also afraid, I think, of the fairies coming back for us. It was hard to believe it was all over after so long. And in the end, neither of us were left unchanged. I wasn't human anymore, and he... Well, it wasn't like he'd had time to be changed the way I was, but Rule had confirmed we had a fey ancestor, or, well, one that was a changeling. What I wouldn't give to sit down and talk to them for a while. Maybe over a coffee in a cafe. That would be really nice. Spencer still had faint traces of magic of his own, and being in fairy had definitely reawakened his ability to see them and... everything else. If there was one good thing that came out of it all, it was that his vision had been completely restored. But that was sort of a double-edged sword when it meant he could see all the things that had been freaking me out for weeks, too. I was just glad that with Overflow fading, there weren't quite as many around as before. More than anything, I just wanted to be there for him, walk him through the shock and fear I'd gone through so he didn't have to deal with it alone. And Spencer, being Spencer, was determined to find that fairy ancestor and learn their story. Or at least do enough genealogy research he could hazard a decent guess. But at least it gave him something to focus on. You do that, Spencer. I'm excited for you. You'll actually be able to talk to them if you figure it out. As for me... Well... I was focused on him. And getting to know him again and trying to get rid of that unsteady awkwardness that cropped up between us every so often. Which was good, because the other person I wanted to spend time with had been... 
scarce. And I knew he'd been distan distancing himself from me for my own safety. No need to provoke the Fae without a reason. Really? Oh, that's so sad. That's why I was surprised to see him waiting by our car when Spencer and I finally left school after a long session in the library, pestering Velos with questions. Hey. Hi! Um, hi. Yes. Hello. You two look like you're doing well. Well, you know, it's been weird. Understatement of the year. He's been super cheery lately, as you can see. He's literally been like that since I've known him. <laughs> Spencer glared at him, but didn't argue. I mean, it was kind of true, after all. Ewan cleared his throat awkwardly. <clears throat> Mind if I borrow your sister? I'll give her a ride home. Spencer frowned, and I thought he was going to protest, but he finally just shrugged and gave me a half-smile. Have fun riding in the cold. Hey, you better have hot chocolate waiting for me when I get there. Good luck with that. He waved and headed to the car, leaving you and I alone. See you, Spencer. Yeah. I walked with you into his bike, waving as Spencer pulled out of the parking lot. He seems like he's doing better. Well, it's only been a couple of days, but he's getting a lot of support from everyone. He struck up a really weird friendship with Corbin, in particular. Yes, he does do that. <laughs> I like that something's consistent across timelines. Ewan made a face at that. I didn't blame him. Spencer and Corbin were a bizarre duo. I don't know. It's a pretty similar dynamic to Ewan and Drayson, if I'm being honest. Anyway, how are you? I'm good. Come on, I'll get you home. It was definitely getting to be too cold to ride his motorcycle anywhere. I had no idea how he didn't have icicles hanging from his nose. Oh yeah! His head was sheltered in that stupid helmet with the visor while I got the one that left my face bare. Exactly. I huddled behind him, wondering why he wanted to give me a ride, until we stopped at the bridge. Okay, so we made it back to the bridge. Ewan pulled off to the side and paused for a long moment before taking off the helmet. I followed suit. I dismounted carefully, and he gave me an amused smile. Finally got the hang of it, I see. Yes, I have. Thank you very much. Sorry to pull you away from Spencer and all that. I just never really got the chance to thank you for coming after me. Us. I mean... I know it was... us. It was definitely both of you. No more fairies? Except for the ones I don't mind having around. You know, and... me, I guess. I'd hope you don't mind having yourself around. Yeah, well, most of the time anyway. I wanted to let you know my dad might be trying to pull some strings. To see if he can get someone on that side of things to rein in the unseelie a little. Interesting. Oh? No one on this side is really able, but some of the other courts might step in. They definitely went over the line this time. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear sometimes the Fae police their own. Good. But you know my dad. He won't actually talk about it or tell me anything. I'm just guessing, based on some things I've overheard. I think... I think I'm going to ask him about it, though. Make him stop hiding things like that from me. I mean, I can't keep pretending I'm not one of them. I bit my lip, unsure what to say. I knew that was a hard thing for him to admit. I still hate fairies. But... Well, not all of them, I guess. I hate what they did to me and Spencer, and what they did to you, but there are good ones. There were some decent ones in Fairy when we were trying to get the two of you back. That's what I heard. We were silent a moment. 
That awkward silence that had reared its head a lot when we were first getting to know each other seemed like it was back. So, what have you been up to the last few days? Ewan looked a little embarrassed and looked away. Actually, that's one of the other things I wanted to tell you. I, I, um... I decided to start acting again. Really? That's great! Actually, there's a small theater group in town. They're all cryptics. They've approached me before, but I never really wanted to. I mean, it felt almost the same as giving up. I hated the idea that I had to be part of a special group to accommodate my... issue. But now... well... I auditioned and they accepted me. It felt good. Better than I thought it would. That's really wonderful. Um... We're going to start working on the next play soon. It's Hamlet. Alas, poor... Don't you dare. Aw, oh, come on. Hey, don't ruin my fun. It's been a while, so my Shakespeare is a little rusty. Um... If I need it, would you mind helping me out here and there? Of course. Just a little. I mean, I know you need to focus on your brother right now, and I don't want... Well, I just think it's best if it's only a little. I knew what he was trying to say with that. He didn't want me to get too involved with him or his family again. Just to be safe. But I shot him a tentative smile anyway. As long as I have front row tickets, because I really cannot wait to see you in tights. <laughs> he groaned softly. Oh, you are such a pain. I know. It's a gift. Anyway, I... That's really what I wanted to tell you. I'll take you home now. I think... I'll walk. Your house is just a little ways up the road. Walking is warmer. <laughs> he just laughed at that. I tossed the helmet at him, but he caught it easily. Suit yourself. I always do. He rolled his eyes and plopped his own helmet on, then waved once before he drove off. I watched him go with a sort of bittersweet feeling. Very much so. I was glad he was moving on. Especially since Spencer and I were desperately trying to do the same. I was sad that he was also keeping his distance to make sure the Fae kept theirs from me. I didn't know that it was necessary, but... Well, maybe it was for the best. Spencer and I had a lot of time to make up for, and it was better to keep my focus there. I shoved my hands in my pockets and started walking. I felt lighter than I had in a long time. Happier. Things were moving forward. And none of us was going to be held back by the past anymore. Maybe... In some way, that made everything that had happened worth it. And if not, we just have to make sure it did. When I walked in the front door a little while later, I was greeted by the distinct aroma of hot chocolate. I smiled to myself and quickly went to join Spencer in the kitchen. Aww. It's almost hard for me to accept that as a friendship ending. <laughs> you know, it's almost like we're close acquaintances now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the level that we're going to interact with him is just going to be very minimal. Which is sad, because we spent so much time with him and his dad, and... It's kind of a similar... A little bit similar to Danny's friendship ending as well. Him and Ewan are, have a similarity in the whole I will make the sacrifice to keep you from harm mentality. You know, like, I'll, I'll be hurt as long as you're safe, kind of thing. Which always guts me, because I'm like, oh man, but I'd rather go down swinging <laughs> with you by my side than you protect me 
just in case. Uh, alas. Okay. But I am glad. We got, like, more info about, for instance, that Ewan's dad is bu bugging the other fairy courts to be like, yo, the Unseelie need some serious reining in, which is great to hear, since the agency will never do anything. Blech. And also hearing, like, more details around Ewan getting back into acting. It's neat that he's getting together with a whole cryptic group, because that'll take some of the stress off. You know, he doesn't have to hide that he's a Delahan. So, you know, if something happens while rehearsing or during an actual play, I'm sure they're more than used to having to cover for stuff. So that would be... I'm, I'm really happy for him in that sense, too. I'm trying to think what else about that ending. I guess we got, like, a little bit more, um, stuff about Spencer, like, how Spencer's doing and all that stuff. Not much about Allie. But, there's only so much you can tell at the end. I'm just feeling kind of, eh. I'm like, oh, he's just gonna keep his distance. That's very sad. I don't like that. <laughs> I like the kiss on the motorcycle on the bridge. That was much nicer. Oh, well... Ended with a sad friendship ending. A little bittersweet. And I can't remember what the ending title was for this either. I'm completely blanking. I think it has something to do with Yorick. I think we tie into the whole Yorick thing after all this time. Yes, Yorick, my friend. There we go! That's all our boys Dunzo. So, all I have left is one more, but that is going to be for another day. For right now, we are done once again with Changeling. Thank you guys very much for joining me and keeping me company during all these bad endings and the friendship ending as well. Really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I love Ewan. He's a great guy. I just want to give him a big old hug and keep his head on straight. <laughs> And go for a ride on his motorcycle. Gosh darn it. All right. So, with that said, we're going back to Steam Prison. And it's DLC time. Our boy Finn, our Yandere boy Finn, is over there waiting in the wings. And, whew, I have so many questions about how that is going to go down. But we'll find out those answers together, hopefully. Until next time, guys, I will see you later.